like to welcome people um, for attending this informal session, um, a, a conversation, I might say, about the local plan. This isn't the formal process. This is very much um, an idea that the leader of the council had, Tim Gwillem, about more engagement with the community and getting views and ideas to help um, our emerging local plan. I, I know you're here, Tim, if you're happy for me saying the words or unless you want to. Um, I, I think it's a very positive idea. Uh, a lot of people have indicated they want to attend this evening um, and some questions have already been asked. Um, so we are limited to time because the meeting is planned to end at seven o'clock. So if we're not able to cover everything this evening, we will hold future meetings. This is the beginning of community engagement. It's not finite, but it's also informal. I, I must stress that. Jill and I are a partnership. Um, we also will have the leader, the, we've got the leader here and also the chairman of council will be present to aid the process. But this is very much open to the community, um, putting their ideas forward, asking the questions to help us engage, not only engage, but formulate ideas to inform the plan. However, I must stress if you can also make formal representation and it's really important if you feel you have a, a value added idea or concept or land please engage with the formal process this is an add-on and hopefully it will work we can only try there's a lot of people here tonight so bear with me if i don't see your hand up we will do our best to talk to you but first and foremost I think we want to go over to the officers to give us an update on where we are with the plan. We have also received um, questions, so we have to decide how we're going to deal with that. Do we go through every one or are people that have written in and have got answers, do they want them read out? And we'll decide that at the time, but I'll go first of all to the officer, Nigel, who hopefully will um, tell us where we are as regards the plan process. Okay, thank you very much, Di. Uh, I don't know whether you can see me or not, but I'm here. Mm -hmm. Nigel Gibbons, I'm actually the forward plan manager of the Forest of Dean Council, if you don't know who I am. And I've been asked just to outline where we are with the current local plan. As with all local plans, it's really a continuous process that almost before you finish one plan, you have to start another. Government guidance is basically that you have to have one that's up to date. And some of that guidance then hints that anything older than five years is out of date. So in other words, it's necessary to plan to establish a new local plan or to at least review one every five years so it is a continuous process and it's something that we started thinking about where the new local plan should take us probably in sort of late 2018 certainly by 2019 we had had some discussions with the members at the district council and we proposed can yeah well, can you turn the no, camera up in? we sorry um we, what Can we propose to do. remind people to mute uh, whilst someone's speaking, please? Thanks. Thank you very much. If, if you can mute when you're, you're not saying anything, I think it keeps the, the meeting something that most people can hear. Um, so what we did in 2019, we did a very conventional thing, which was to, after discussing with the members, the district council members and some of the wider community, we evolved what we thought should be the main issues and options that the plan should address. Now against that were the broad numbers of housing likely to be needed, some of the key emerging sort of threads of government guidance, the protection of the land, the need to actually propose development sites in a way that the district could accommodate them. So we had a 
consultation that actually ran through the autumn of 2019. But that was really just to propose some ways in which both the main options and issues can be addressed and the way in which the and, and what they are and how you might provide for them in terms of a sort of spatial strategy. In other words, if you're dealing with a certain quantity of development, where are you going to accommodate it? What sort of pattern might you be looking at? And that was all about general issues and options, as I say. And some ideas emerged there that were quite general. Um, you know, should development be more spread out across the district? Should we be concentrating on certain locations of the main towns, the main villages? Would it be appropriate to float the idea of uh, perhaps what local authorities in other areas are doing, which is to concentrate on one or maybe more than one um, new settlements? And these can be sort of village developments or they can be slightly larger. We were looking for something approaching seven and a half thousand new dwellings to be accommodated, but it's important to remember that with that goes all the open space you need, all the facilities and services that you need, employment that you need, how can the infrastructure be provided? So although you'll often see a headline of seven and a half thousand new houses to be found in Forrester Dean. What we're really saying is it's that and what needs to go with it. Now, just to note that this seven and a half thousand includes sites we know already. It includes sites that have got permission already. So using the prescribed methods of calculating what we thought were going to be needed, it looked like about four thousand new dwellings would need to be accommodated on sites that we couldn't identify at that time. We can't identify now because we haven't done the new plan yet. So that was issues and options through 2019. Following that, we focused a little bit more on what might be a preferred option. And about a year ago, the council approved for consultation, not making any decisions, but of a scheme for consultation which was referred to as the preferred option so looking at the evidence so far which was partial but it was pointing in a direction that it was worth exploring an option for a local plan where there might be a new large settlement in one location there might be selected of expansion of maybe nuant maybe Beachley Camp, that sort of approach. So that was a consultation that took place in the back end of last year from October through to January. And it produced a very large response in some areas, a variety of ideas from people who were responding to it. And it suggested, I think, to the members of the council that we should take account of that, but also look at what other options may be suitable for the plan to explore? Could it go in a different direction? Should we be looking at, you know, something either different or, or, or where are the responses to that? Where are they taking us? So what we have at the moment, and I, I'm sure Tim Gulliam, Councillor Tim Gulliam, the leader of the council can introduce um, where he has suggested these forums go. He's the portfolio holder, planning policy, and he has introduced, with the cooperation and discussion with the members, another way of getting some more information, which is going to inform the way in which the plan develops. So that's where we are now with these forums. It's against evidence gathering that is still going on. Um, it's a continuous process, whether it be technical evidence or whether it's comments about um, that we receive. It's all evidence that needs to be taken account of. But where we are essentially now is that we have both the responses to the consultations we've already done, but also these forums which are intended to discuss how the plan should proceed from now on. What the next steps are, um, essentially, the next formal step would be a draft local plan, which would look for all intents and purposes like a local plan. In other words, it would identify sites, and it would have policies. So it's important that the strategy is settled before we go forward into the 
the next stage of the local plan and that's really what these discussions are all about it's about reviewing and discussing where the strategy should go so if i can hand back to Di, i think you know if there are any questions that you want to bring through um you know by putting them into the chat first or whatever i can answer those but i'll, I'll hand back to Di now and thank you Yes, well, well, Nigel, I'd like to seek guidance, actually, because we have already received some questions prior to the deadline of the 15th. And now, do you think it would be better if those were read out so that everyone present can get a, a, a sense of what already has been asked or if all the people that have joined had access to them? No, nobody other than yourselves as lead members have had access to them yet. We were going to either read them out or make them available in some way, as well as responding to the individual person or organisation asking the questions. I can read them if you like. It will take a few minutes, but equally it will um, you know, outline the issues that we've already had raised. The, the only thing I would say is that these are questions where almost everybody asking them didn't say whether they were attending this forum or the developer forum which perhaps my mistake for not saying we should point them in that direction they're relevant to both but it may be that whoever asked the question is actually attending the, the other forum if i can put it that way so if you'd like me to read them out or yeah, some I, of those I, I actually think that's quite important it will just give a flavor of the questions that have um, being put to the forum so far. Also, um, could you please, as a follow on, put any f other questions in the chat? But maybe if we have these first, then we'll avoid repetition. So, um, are you happy to do that, Nigel? Obviously, I've got them in front of me, but I'd rather you do it if possible. I can say the first one's from a John Payne. Um, no. That's right. I, I'm happy to do it. What we will do is, I think, make the document that's got the responses in available. It'll probably have to be on the website, but we will make that available to everybody. Absolutely. Just, uh, um, I mean, the whole idea of this process is that it's open and it's transparent. And so the answers and the questions will be on the website. I think that's a lot easier um, and will continue to do so and i presume the same will happen after the developer forum that's taking place tomorrow at 5 32. so thank you nigel i will mute now and leave you to do the questions okay thank you uh, the first question as di said is from john payne and the first question he's asked is how do we construct a thriving bio regional economy that plays to our resources and resilience my particular interests are housing and sustainable agriculture and the response we've put at the moment is a variety of actions and initiatives are likely to be involved not least the possible move to a biosphere reserve which the local plan will need to be compatible with and supportive the second question from john payne is how do we set and achieve target for rewilding the forest of dean and the response is that rewilding is something that is relevant to but not central to the local plan the local plan will need to ensure it supports improved biodiversity and habitat improvements and also takes account of initiatives that assist with better flood management and, and management and catchments it will not in itself consider rewilding that's the local plan although it may be able to contribute for example with biodiversity enhancements that are required as part of the development process. The local plan will need to ensure that its development proposals do not have an overall adverse effect on the environment. The next question is one from Alana Alsop. I would like to ask a question about the local plan outline. When is this being reviewed as I have land outside the village boundary, Tidenham and Sedbury, that I want to apply for planning? is there a way i can apply before it gets this gets reviewed and the response to that which is highly relevant to anybody who has development interest you are free to submit a planning application at any time which will be determined with regard to the policies and other material considerations that apply but 
all settlement boundaries are being reviewed as part of the local plan process and any representations received will be taken into account. You may also like to consider submitting a site for possible inclusion in the separate register of sites that may have development potential, that is something called SHLA, which is something that the uh, district council along with others hold and it's a register of land that owners and agents consider has development potential that may technically be suitable but isn't necessarily ever part of planning policy. And the next question from Edmund Cracknell. I believe a sustainable transport strategy is the key to all development proposals. Will there be a dedicated focus group to define what we mean by sustainable transport? To gather community views, understand future needs, and propose a range of options. And the response, and I do apologise for shortening some of these slightly in order to keep to time, we will publish the whole thing. Enabling and making use of sustainable transport, along with the reduction in the need to travel, are essential goals for the local plan. Although it is not at present proposed to have a separate transport group, because of the importance of a local plan which supports and promotes sustainable transport, any discussion about plan distribution and development of the local plan's policies and proposals is likely to be indivisible with the discussion of how to make travel more sustainable and locations more self-contained. The Forrester Dean District Council is also considering how to promote and deliver active travel and your engagement on this subject is welcome. Gloucestershire County Council is responsible for many transport matters and there are also opportunities to engage with them. Okay. The next question, questions I should say, sorry, are from Chris Ricketts for Planning Forum. Forrester Dean District Council were not able to substantiate a five-year land supply at the planning appeal for land off Bradford's Lane, Newant. The council should know the rules for making such assessments, why could it not do so? And the response, the requirements of a five-year land supply are set out in national guidance, which was updated in 2019 in a manner that clarified what information would be necessary. Sites with detailed planning permission may be included unless there is evidence they may not be deliverable. Sites that only have outline permission or otherwise allocated or identified should only be considered deliverable where there is clear evidence that housing completions will begin on site within five years. Although there is some evidence available for many sites in the Forest of Dean, there is not the level of proof required which would place them in the five-year deliverable category. And then there's a reference to the fuller explanation of that, which is actually published on the website, which of course we can provide for anybody who's interested. The second question from Mr. Ricketts is the 2020 SHLA, this is this register of um, sites that are effectively tendered by landowners and their agents as having potential for development, identified is number 21,000 plots for homes and a five-year land supply therefore. The council's management, the question, the council's management of housing delivery is failing. Can you explain why this is and what are you doing to correct this delivery failure? And the response is that the SHLA register of sites identifies land that is considered to be able to be developed if planning policy is set aside. It is in effect a register of sites that owners and or their agents consider could be developed and where there are no major technical problems which can readily be identified. This is explained in documents that we can reference. The register forms, therefore, a bank of sites which may be considered for identification when the local plan is being revised or prepared. Many of the sites that could be developed may never meet the policies of an existing or new local plan, even though the land is physically capable of being developed. Some may be developed and also allocated where they accord with the strategy. And for example, fall within a settlement boundary and are considered beneficial to allocate. The new local plan will need to identify sufficient suitable land for development from various sources, including SHLA, registered of registers sorry, of brownfield land to be able to demonstrate an adequate land supply. The third question from Mr Rickett. With regard to Beachley, Tutsal and Sedbury, 
these are defined boundary settlements in the adopted local plan, meaning they're small settlements within an adopted plan that is not considered part of its core policy for further development. That, sorry, that the adopted plan is not considered part of its core policy for further development. The council's new preferred strategy decided on the 8th, 15th of October seeks to change the current local plan in the next local plan, 2026 to 41, to create a new town by merging the existing settlements and the development of 800 homes at Beachley Camp, plus 200 existing married quarters and further housing at Tuts Hill Sudbury, all amounting to 2,000 homes. This will put the wider area on a growth trajectory over the life of the local plan with further allocations in the open countryside. And the question arising from that is what consultation has there been with the southwest of England regional authorities cross border with the Welsh devolved authority about this change to core policies of the adopted local plan. And the response is that neighbouring authorities are consulted as part of the local plan process. This includes Monmouthshire and those in the west of England, for example, South Gloucestershire. Although the preferred option, which was the 2020 consultation proposal of 20 did propose a substantial development at Beachley and a possible additional development at Tetzel, it was not suggested that the existing settlements would merge. It did, of Nigel, course... Before, sorry, Nigel, before you go on, I have noticed Helen Molyneux put her hand up. Now, would you prefer to answer all of them, or if it's in relation to this particular question, would you be happy for me to allow her to ask a question? I'm just about to finish that response well, you and I'll be happy to take the question there. Yeah, yeah, certainly. If, Thank that, you. if that helps, I can do that by all means. Uh, Beach, so it's a question that the existing settlements would merge. It, it was not suggested that the existing settlements would merge. It did, of course, propose, this is the preferred option, that a major change in the form of development of previously developed land at Beachley Camp would be part of the strategy for the local plan. And if you would like to, I can, uh, if Helen's got a question, I'm happy to answer that now. Thank you, Nigel, yes. Uh, thank you, Nigel. Unfortunately, it's not a question. What I'm wondering is, is everybody else hearing things clearly? Because I'm not. Uh, well, Helen, I'm hearing quite clearly. I don't know if it's your connection. Um, I don't know. I'm having great trouble. Have you got any earphones or anything that might help? <laughs> no. I'll have a look. Okay, thank you. I'll carry right, on then. Thank sorry. you, Nigel. Thanks. Thank yeah, you. I, I think what we can do best is to circulate the the full text of everything, so everybody's got access to it and the, and the links Great. on it because it, yeah, lovely. Hopefully that'll help. So, um, Mr. Rickett, supplementary question: What consultation has there been with the English public service providers, health, education, highways, to support this change in what he says regional spatial hierarchy? And then he refers to the Abbas and Young supporting statement, which is actually material submitted by the the planning agent who's working for the owners of Beachley Camp. Um, and he says that it states that many of these services will be provided in Chepstow because it's close to Beachley. And to make such a statement and for the Forest and Dean District Council to have adopted the preferred strategy implies the Welsh authorities have been consulted and agree. If this is correct, where is the report of consultation? And the response is that providers of services are consulted as part of the plan process. And any responses received from that consultation, which ended in January 2021, have now been published. The material submitted by Avis and Young is a third party representation on behalf of a landowner, not part of the Forest of Dean Council's own evidence. There is a link to that where you can read it, which is provided in the response, and comments from Monmouth County Council, Highways England, Stagecoach, as well as the material from Avis and Young are available there. Mr Ricketts next question is good plan making requires all options for future land use to consider the widest needs 
and requirements of local plan areas with adopted core policies in accordance with national planning policy. Critical to these is the requirement to provide a minimum of a five year land supply, housing land supply. Five year land supply is not a cap to the minimum. This does not mean where the local plan. Uh, sorry, Nigel, I'm going to stop you a second. Something's happened to my screen. It says Janet Marriott is presenting um, and it's caused, I don't know if other people have had a, an issue. Um, it's, does, yes, it's if I can interrupt, it's gone back now. I think there was a button pressed by mistake. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, I can continue if you're happy for me to. You um, can. I know you, you have your hand up, so I'll come to you after the questions. Okay, thank you. Um, so it, it's a question about the five year land supply. It's the, the question that comes from that is alternative uses of Beachley Camp were put to the Forest of Dean District Council in May 2018 and ignored. Why was that? Why were those alternative uses not noted or put to Cabinet or full Council? in October 2020 when it was considering the housing land allocation preferred strategy and the response is while the Forest of Dean Council are aware of alternative views about the future of Beachley Camp the view of the council was that it should be proposed for a mixed use to include possibly 600 dwellings that would leave potential for other uses to be accommodated potential alternatives were proposed to the Forest of Dean Council as a result of the 2021 consultation, but the council has yet to decide if these should be followed in the next stages of the local plan. And I might just add that apart from engaging with the person asking the questions, we are also at a stage where the council has yet to formally considered what their responses are to all those representations that we gathered up to the Hi. early part of this year. We, sorry, is, is it possible that somebody could mute uh, the microphone? Because I'm, I'm getting a bit of. Can the host? Um, the host can mute any for everyone. I, well, if, if if you can tell me, I can do that. I'd be grateful. I'm not sure whether I'm the host or not. Yes, it's, yes, it's, it's Helen. It's can you Helen. mute? Um, it's, she's muted now. Muted. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, from SF Planning, the next question. The Council's approach to employment land protection and allocation in the light of Class E being introduced, which widens the use classes order. Um, I'm sorry, that, that's a, a point, but the question is being asked. Um, government proposals have made more flexible some changes of use. And it's really a question about what our response to that is. And the response is that the revisions are being considered as part of the local plan review and clearly there will be a need to for an approach that takes account of these in the local plan it is likely that the local plan will continue to promote a wide range of employment uses types and also support both identified sites used for employment and other purposes while it will be important to continue to protect some of these sites, others, notably some of the previously developed sites that have been identified, are likely to have a more positive future for other purposes. And the next question from Mr Jenkins is, are the Council looking at a specific policy in the new local plan which supports individual, small scale, custom build plots, not just a percentage of larger strategic allocations? Also, there is, is there any information on how many South build plots have been delivered? And the answer is yes, the recent changes on government guidance as to how South and custom build should be approached will be taken into account in the emerging local plan and more specific policies will be necessary. The council do have information which will be made available after the forum and that's because um, my colleague is providing it and I didn't have time to ask him in time but we will provide more information about how we're doing it we are addressing the requirement to effectively build space for um, dealing with custom south build housing into the new plan policies final Nigel, question before you go on can I ask that if there are any sort of abbreviations and clarifications 
there was a comment in the messages that um, there is a difficulty at times understanding some of the language being used. Um, so just if there are any abbreviations, if they could be clarified so that um, anyone who is involved in the meeting doesn't get confused by the language. Uh, I just thought I'd put that in because it can, I, I think you have been clear, but just in case, if you could just clarify, should there be any abbreviations, it would be helpful. Yeah, I'll and, try. I mean, and we're going to... to assure people that there will be an opportunity either to raise a hand, that which will have a queue-in system, or write questions in the chat, and we will do our best to uh, either address them tonight or get back to the person asking the question. So this is very much listening, although it is important that the questions that have been asked are aired this evening. So if you continue, please, Nigel. Okay, I'll try with the abbreviations because we're guilty of it, just as some of the questions have a few in as well. Um, is there any update on SIL, which is the Community Infrastructure Levy, which is a current method by which developer contributions can be elicited against uh, new development taking place and the introduction of this is something that's gone on a sort of progressive basis across the country with local authorities individually deciding whether to introduce or not so the response is that there's no update at present although the situation is one of awaiting neither guidance from government who are reviewing the whole infrastructure levy question or whether or not to have it or not so in other words it's paused Forrester Dean are awaiting either guidance from the government about any proposed change or the lack of it and that situation is likely to remain for some time hopefully it'll be clarified when the new local plan reaches its next stage the next question questions are from Julian Davis um, and they're in the form of questions and observations. I just saw something I thought it was, uh, you know. When planning permissions are given for housing, what obligations are put to the developer to ensure a carbon neutral construction? What requirements, for example, are in place for the use of non-fossil fuel heating systems? not optional or offset with other measures. Gas or oil seem to be preferred form of heating and can the Forest of Dean Council establish a policy on making this mandatory on any planning approval and also applying it retrospectively where housing and other forms of new build are being considered. And the response which may be increasingly overtaken by events because there's a certain amount of additional freedom I think now for local plans to stretch the envelope more but the response as it's written is that construction standards are likely to remain tied to the current building regulations but the local plan is review is considering how and if more ambitious targets and requirements can be incorporated into its policies the FODDC objectives the overall wider objectives of the council as well as the local plan would support these but they would need to be able to be incorporated into a local plan which would then be supported by an examiner an examination. It is hoped that government policy provides or will provide sufficient scope for better standards to be achieved. And this applies to heating, which is a matter where the local plan can only have limited influence. In other words, we're looking for guidance, but we are trying to push the envelope or suggesting to members that we do so. The next question from Mr. Davis is, where say five to 20 houses are built smallish groups of housing are built or indeed any new building as a group then a mandatory district type system needs to be a condition of any permission and this could be for ground source or air source for example and the, he says there is no excuse for any development to be serviced by fossil fuels and the response to that point is the local plan will encourage district schemes and local renewable energy generation and possibly carbon offsetting. This will apply especially to larger schemes and sites which are allocated by the local plan. It is considered the best way to proceed would be with clear technical guidance from government. 
but the local plan will also need to support local initiatives and encourage carbon neutral developments. Given that the local plan is only able to provide policies for new building development, it is especially important that the highest standards are achieved in construction and the ongoing use of buildings. The local plan has greater influence over this new development and hence on the likely use of sustainable transport and the overall need for transport as well. The next questions are from... Nigel, Nigel can I just jump in there? Yes, of course. Could you just uh, please explain what district systems are? Because I think that not everybody will necessarily understand the term. Yeah, it's probably my fault for using it, but it, it's essentially where you would have one probably sustainable source of heat, which would then be piped to houses, flats or whatever within a single, usually a single scheme, a locality. It may be wood chip, for instance, burning that then provides heating for a, you know, a single housing development or whatever. So it, it's, it's local, um, locally generated sometimes energy or it's locally generated heat that is then used for a sort of wider group of houses or whatever. The next questions are from Ian Gower. Um, I have a question for the Community Forum on 20th of October. What is the plan to revitalise the heart of Mitchell Conservation Area? On the site that was formerly the iconic George Hotel and the surrounding area, planning assessments from the Conservation Officer and County Archaeologist often consider the special character of this area when considering applications. The response the current local plan and the Mitchell Dean Neighbourhood Development Plan both consider the issues raised. The site of the George Hotel had a planning permission for redevelopment until recently, but this has now lapsed. Unfortunately, the building decayed over a long period and was then destroyed by fire. Unfortunate, I'm sorry, the site remains allocated in the current local plan for housing and is also considered specifically in the neighbourhood plan which supports this use. The conservation area and the need to preserve and enhance that, as well as the need to protect individual listed buildings in their settings, are important considerations. Government emphasis on design and character of areas will be translated into more local plan, I'm sorry, more local policies in the new local plan, and supporting materials such as the neighbourhood plan evidence and additional character assessments would be welcome. It is noted that there are some areas in the conservation area that would benefit from improvement. And we have passed that item of correspondence to colleagues con to consider and respond in connection with the potential enforcement action and safety of buildings. Not to say it's appropriate in this particular case, but to consider whether there is a case for that. And what you will see is some further supplementary material supplied by Mr Gower but they are the questions. So moving on to the next series of questions, which are from the Cross Parish Communications Group sent in by Mr. John Francis. First question, given the Prime Minister's pledge. Nigel, Nigel, I've just no. been thinking because you it's not fair on you for everyone present. There are about three more questions, aren't there? But I'm uh, thinking, should we have a short break from those just to see if anyone has a question so far that they want to put in the chat. Um, we've got a comment so far from John Payne, which I'll I'll ring out, I'll read out, and then we'll go back to the final three. I'm just thinking just for a little break. Otherwise, the whole meeting will be just listening to those and no one will have had a chance to speak. Are you happy for me to do that? Yes, certainly, uh, whatever you want yeah. me to do. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> just hang on in there because I know there are three more questions, but I will just ring, read out what John has written, or unless everyone can see what John has written. I will say this one. I was hoping that the local plan would, where are we? It's disappeared, would be a clean sheet and concentrate on how we're going to cope with climate change with a particular emphasis on changes that will occur in energy use the workplace and creating communities that have the resources to look after their elderly population. We should have local home construction standards and move to factory built timber homes, the majority being self 
distilled. I mean, a very interesting point, and particularly I'm interested in the um, idea of the local construction and timber built homes, but whether that's at all possible, it is something we can work towards in our plan. I look forward to a comment from you. Please put that forward in the formal consultation, John. I think that's important that that idea is heard. Are there any more questions before we move on? I'll go back to you then, Nigel, but please put, put your hand up or write something and we will listen. Thank you, Nigel. If you carry on. Thank you. Um, oh, sorry, I'm just trying to find where I was. Um, the question, the first question from Mr. Francis, given the Prime Minister's pledge at the recent Tory conference that houses should not be built on green fields and the fact that ministers are abandoning proposals for an overhaul of the planning rules, is it not time to challenge the housing quotas allocated to the Forest of Dean that no one thinks is right and too high given the local need and likely employment prospects of the area. Other authorities have successfully done this. Why don't we? And the response we have, it is agreed that it seems likely that the government are reviewing the proposed planning reforms. It certainly is the case. Various reports have indicated that there are likely to be changes, but none have yet been announced. The new local plan is being prepared in accord with the current guidance and the method of calculating housing need that goes with it. This remained the case last year when, for example, the proposal to further, to increase further, sorry, the requirement for new housing was published by government and later abandoned. Although the so-called standard method of housing calculation is that which the local plan uses at present, it is considered flawed. And the Forest Dean Council could challenge it up to and at the local plan examination. But for the present, however, it is considered to await any revised guidance from government and for the emerging plan to use the so-called standard method as an indication of the likely requirements. The calculation of the overall number of new dwellings required will clearly affect the strategy that any local plan will follow. It does, however, remain likely that there will be a need for a substantial additional provision to be made in a plan that covers the period up to 2041. The broad strategic options, not necessarily the numbers, are considered still valid, especially in the context of the need to address climate change, although no one option has been finally selected for the draft local plan. Mr Francis, next question. Where are we on the five-year land supply from Forest of Dean and what is the shortfall? What applications are in the planning department awaiting for approval? What is the roadmap to address the shortfall? And he makes the point that it's crucial to avoid speculative development. The requirements, the response, the requirements of the five-year land supply are set out in the National Planning Policy Framework, shortened to NPPF often, which was updated in 2019 in a manner that clarified what information would be necessary to establish a five-year land supply. A site that has detailed permission would be included as contributing lest there is evidence that it may not be deliverable. In addition, sites that have only outline permission or are otherwise allocated or identified should only be considered deliverable when there is clear evidence that housing completions will begin on site within five years. And although there is some evidence available for many sites in the Forest of Dean, there is not the level of proof required which would place them in the five-year deliverable category as defined by the National Planning Guidance. And the supply of sites with detailed permission does not provide a five-year supply, especially after taking account of the likely rate of delivery that can be supported where there is concentration of permissions, such as at Lydney. And there are references to where that is further explained in, in documents that we have to produce. Two documents, one which deals with the way in which the five-year supply is calculated and one which explains what we're doing about increasing the number of 
completions. The current estimate is that there is not a five-year supply of land and it is at a minimum about 3.9 years. And then it says, please see the note above for further details. To raise the supply requires more land with detailed planning permission. And even though the outgoing local plan, which is the allocations plan in effect, identifies sufficient land to meet its needs, this will not support the required five-year supply without an increase in detailed permissions, which would actually require an increase in the demand for new dwellings and hence developers coming forward with detailed applications. There are a number of current applications, most of which are referenced in the documents that are referred to above and are supplied on the web. From this, it will be noted that there are a number of outline applications pending, some allocated sites which have yet to be the subject of applications, but are at the pre-application stage. So they're in the pipeline, but they're not necessarily able to be counted in part of the five-year land supply. Thank Mr. you for that, Nigel. Nigel. Before you go on to the next question, though, I just want to draw attention that Lewis H has made a very valid point, saying we're in danger in pricing young families out of the area. We need family homes. And if this means filling if in spaces and empty ground within a development area, surely this should be considered fill in the gaps before developing other areas. Now, I'm sure that point will be looked at uh, when the all the comments are put together. And Jackie Dale has said, absolutely right, John. This would also help to create good local jobs. We need good, sustainable jobs for our communities so that young people stay in the forest rather than move away. Our communities would die without young people absolutely and we all know what's happening many are going to live in Gloucester because it's more economical for them to do so so yes I, I shouldn't declare an interest in that area but I do agree with that point uh, a question from Bob Wolfson when will the council come forward with an indication of by what percentage each parish town might have to increase in order for a growth by incremental increases approach to the local plan to be taken seriously considered at a local level. Um, Nigel, I believe you made reference to all the points being looked at before it's decided which way the plan's going to go, but would you like to add to that? Yes, and one of the ways in which members of the council discuss the local plan before any sort of formal decisions are made is, is a group to inform the portfolio holder. And that looks at a variety of topics. The next meeting of that group is quite soon. And this incremental increase approach is something that members have asked we consider. So at that next meeting, or the one after, or possibly both, we will be considering what the implications of a strategy that proposed a sort of incremental increase across a wide range of settlements might be and clearly there'll be you know discussion on that and i would suggest that it's quite likely if members wish it to be that that comes into the maybe the next or next but one of these forums as a as a subject to be discussed absolutely and before we finalize the other questions bob uh, uh, Jennifer Holman has said one man's empty ground is another man's valuable green space, which absolutely is true, but we do have to find housing somewhere, so it's how the best way we do it. And Bob has said, how many parishes currently have no settlement boundary? Does the District Council plan to address the issue as part of the consultation? If you want me to respond to that, the short answer is I, I couldn't give you the number. There are several parishes that have no settlement boundaries and it always comes up as a question as to should the local plan be looking at um, providing certain sorts of development, whether it be affordable housing, which we have done in some of those, or whether it is necessary to have a slightly different approach and obviously planning going back to green spaces and what sort of strategy, it's always about achieving a balance between addressing what is the real housing need, not the requirements or demand, but the housing need of the district and safeguarding, protecting 
various areas within it and that's that's i suppose that's what makes it difficult but essentially the um way the plan is likely to go forward will be to discuss again some of the strategies or potential strategies for the plan and um i think uh councillor gulliam might like to say something on that yes, subject yes i just going to say as tim is the portfolio holder i think it's pertinent to bring him in now thanks though and, and absolutely right we, we certainly do intend looking at the settlement boundaries um in, in in a positive way if it is the um the direction of travel that we move away from the idea perhaps of a of a, of a, of a new town as it were if, if, if that's the direction of travel then we'll obviously then have to look at um what incremental rise each parish will have to accept and the way I see it working is that we would then invite in, in that individual parish to come and discuss with us, sit around the table, look at a map, look at their settlement boundary if they have one, look at areas and ask for that local community to come up with ideas as to where those houses should be. And potentially, if I could add more on to it, and you'd have to, you'd have to excuse me, I do speak as a layman. What I would like then is for them also to come up with what the payoff is for that so what we what do we then go back to the developers and say if there's a certain town that's or a village that's prepared to accept 10 houses what does it need in order to accept those 10 houses does it need a shop built does it need extra a, a new road done or something like that that we can then go back to the developers and say you know what you can potentially build 10 houses here where you wouldn't have built them otherwise however to do it, you have to deliver this as well or assist us in delivery. That's the way I see it. If we're going to go down the um, incremental route, which if, and if that's the, the, the direction of travel that, that you guys and the developers, wherever we decide to go and, and the team that's working with me decide that that's where we're going to go, we will sit with each individual parish, discuss what their the demands on their parish might be under that system, and see if it's possible. That's the way I, I'm looking at doing it. And Tim, will the NDP feed into that? Um, because obviously some of the areas uh, do have NDPs. I mean, that, that's my thinking. And Jackie Dale's asked a similar question. Yeah, I think so. They have to. There's no, there's no point. You know, they, they have to. That, 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 that's work that's already done, as far as I'm concerned. That's information. That work is done. You know, I, I had the pleasure of, um, of meeting the Churchill um, group of, of, of communities some 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 weeks ago. They've got a ton of ideas, but all right, might not be might not be tied up in a NDP, but they are ideas that we need to look at for that individual area, and, and I think that's the way forward. If we're going to go, as I said, incremental, each each area is taking its share of the burden. Let's see what we can do and talk to those independent individual areas and see what we can come up with. And I think the settlement boundaries do need looking at. Again, I'm only I'm only a layman, but I'm, I've looked at maps in the past where settlement boundaries are, and it looks to me as if somebody's just been in a pub and drawn, drawn a felt tip pen down a line somewhere where you can deliver on one side of the road but not on the other. I think we need to be modern about this. You as communities know where houses can go where they shouldn't go we need to listen we need to see if we can get that into a new settlement boundary and, and, and make good on it thank you Doug. thank you tim jackie did you want to make a comment prior to us moving on thank you Doug. you asked the question for me i was going to ask when tim said about um changing the boundaries etc um i was going to ask about the ndps will they be um adhere to and um, the question has been answered thank you uh, uh, dr jennifer homan has made an observation though she feels that I, I i hope i'm putting the right slant on it there's not enough weight to take into the NP, ndps in the process and are often ignored um i just wanted to make that observation as it's been made in the comments uh, can I, also, other... can I also add, I, I, I tend to agree. I, I, I'm yeah. chairman of the Berry Hill NDP. I tend to agree. We did that. We did a really good NDP. We did, as did Colford. 
and we still ended up with that Gladman's monstrosity of a development at Lower Lane. So you can do what you want to do, but it must sit in, and it's it, unless we as a local authority help those smaller parish town councils and come up with NDPs to fit it in with our local plan, yeah. we people are just wasting their time otherwise. Can I just say, please, Di, that this yeah. is Jack here. Um, I've always found that the local plan team um, give great weight to, well, our NDP anyway. They're very respectful of it. I think it can fall down in the planning process. I agree with you there, Jackie. Yeah. I think that's right there. And um, Rebecca Hoyland made a very important point. We need homes that can be secure, affordable rent. I agree with you there, Rebecca. We need more. We've got a waiting list of over 2,000 on our waiting list. Um, not empty second home. We did have an empty home meeting this week, and you'd be surprised how few empty homes that can be back into use that there are in the forest of Dean. So I'm sure in parishes people will come forward and say there are often reasons why um, things can't progress with them but I do agree there should be a rigorous approach to long-term empty homes being brought back into use. So that's just a, 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 an opinion of mine. Um, and we've also got a comment by Paul Thomas. A big growth in employment is via small, medium-sized enterprises. Incremental development can accommodate this and needs to accommodate this. Local homes connected with local employment, a reduction in traffic, and if done right, where the young can afford homes, where they grow up and are close to their family. Absolutely. Um, I also like the idea of live-work units for um, very small, uh, not entrepreneurs, but people that want to work in their local communities. And I think we have to be creative around local employment. It's a must for the future. If we're mindful of climate change and we're mindful of what's happening to our forest, it has to be as local as it possibly can. And if that can happen, I'm a great believer in that. Um, John Francis has said all NDPs must follow the local plan. If we get the local plan correct with community involvement, then more NB NDPs will be adhered to. Absolutely. I represent Cinderford, and as yet, we haven't got an NDP. We've had a local area plan, but I do agree that NDPs are a must. But also, it's essential they're updated because they you do NDPs, but I do think they need to be. A, a, an ongoing um, plan, a plan that's revisited with the community on a, a frequent basis, so they're relevant to the time. Um, so yes, they are very important. There's no other questions at the moment in the chat, so can we go back to the other questions, please? Um, Nigel, oh sorry, Martin Astley has raised a hand, so Martin, I'll come to you first. If you'd like to yeah. ask a question. Thank you, Di. Uh, I just wanted to ask a question that if um, the plan were to adopt the disparate approach of having smaller developments across the district, uh, how will it uh, cover the fact that there's going to be a, an increased need for uh, roads, schools, hospitals, etc., which when you spread the development out across a much wider area, we need to make sure that we don't lose uh, the provision of, of those um, services. A, a very valid point, Martin. Who would like to answer that? Nigel or Tim? I, I, I can answer strategically, Di. And, and that's, and I'll just go back to what I, what I said earlier. All we can, you know, much of this is hope that, that there is that natural growth. That with people that you know, as things grow, you know, I don't know however many houses we're talking, with that growth, there comes extra, and the GP take on extra GPs to into the schools become bigger. And don't forget, there are, there's section 106 monies that can be made available and things like that. I think you know, with 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 a single settlement, we would still have that 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 issue, Martin, because there's no guarantees that we would get everything that we needed. You know, 
even even with a single settlement, we we couldn't possibly develop a new another hospital in the forest. That 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 wouldn't happen. But what we can do is we can encourage it, and hopefully, this is what tomorrow will be about as well. We can encourage that natural, economic, and social growth within the the local area. I know that's a bit wishy-washy, but it's the best I can offer you now. It's a very good question that you raised, and I don't think there's any guarantees in it, to be honest. But it is important the pressure is put on, um, because it's in, the services are stretched at the moment, so any additional homes, they need to, the local services. We have to keep pushing for an increase in that to meet local needs. Um, so thank you for that, Martin. One quick further question. Will that be a case of uh, the various um, parishes, etc., within the, the district, just keeping communication during the plan uh, formation process, just to make sure that the developers, that basically there's sufficient pressure is put on the developers to assist with the provision of roads, etc.? Absolutely. And I, I think that dialogue is essential because so it doesn't slip. Yeah, I, I, I think it's the essence, really, Martin. So thank you for that. Nigel, would you like to finish the questions? I have, I've got a question to you before you do start, though, Nigel. Do we need the Robert Hitchings questions, or will they go to the developers? Or do you think it's important that we hear them here as well? I, I think because a lot of them are... A lot of the questions we've had so far didn't specify which forum. It might be fairer to deal with them all tonight and absolutely, then this to the chair tomorrow um, to decide how he or she he Yeah, absolutely. And them. before you carry on, I have got an unknown hand up. There's no name to it. So would the unknown person like to ask their question? Uh, I believe I know it's Roger. Is it? I think I recognise the face. Roger, have you got a question? You are muted at the moment. Right. It's not so much a question, it's more a comment, I think. As some of you may well know, I am involved with Lydney with Lydney. And we have had, I think, probably the biggest developments over the last few years. And there's some worthy words said tonight about roads, hospitals, doctors, etc. But more the developments we've had, I don't think there's hardly been any new infrastructure. The doctors are full up. The schools are virtually full up. And well, basically, the, the whole play, the whole thing is being changed completely, but there's been no, as far as I can see, as far as most people can see, there's been no actual changes in the infrastructure anywhere from the new developments. I'd like to have some, some about a comment on that. I'll comment if you like, Dave. Thank you, Tim. Simply put it like this, Roger, I wasn't leader of the council when those developments went through. I don't think you attended a forum like this before those developments went through. I don't think the council spoke to developers before those developments went through. That's why we're trying to do different. We're trying to learn from the mistakes that have been made in the past and put it right and make sure that this local plan is fit for purpose and fit for the age. Thanks, Thank Doug. you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. There's a very interesting point made by Signora in the comments it says work near where people live more homes are rent affordably affordable homes for young people Diane Tim agree these are priorities so why do we end up with large estates of market housing can the local plan tr tr truly change the current reality so fundamentally does the district council have the power or does power reside with central government and the developers? A very moot point. Um, my personal view is the power is in the wrong area. Um, and at the end of the day, decisions made by this council can be overruled at the appeal process. Um, but 
that's just my uh, personal view. Uh, I would like to know what you think of that, Tim. So you're absolutely right. We, and look, we, we, we've suffered in the past because of the way that things have been done and, and because of the, the local plans that we've had before. We, and, and we do end up with, as I said, monstrosities such as Gladman's and, and things like that. We can only hope to put that right. When it comes to these people, they, they claim viability and they've got very, very, they got very, very deep pockets. They buy land and they want to make their 30% profit. And 27%, 22% isn't good enough for them. They insist on making their 30, whatever it is they want to make. And they've got very deep pockets. And the fact of it is they actually have deep pockets in this council. I'll, I'll refer to the Gladman site at Lower Lane because that's what I know a lot about. That was turned down a number of occasions. It went to a planning inspector who agreed that it should be turned down. It went through to the um, the minister who agreed it should be turned down. But they still managed to get it to a high court and a judge who, as far as I'm concerned, probably had never been anywhere near Gloucestershire, let alone the Forest of Dean, decided they were able to build it and the houses are now being built. We will only get away from that by having a solid local plan that's supported by the communities, that's supported by the developers and supported by the business. Now, when it comes to building houses and, and for our young people, people like that, we're absolutely right. We, we need to be doing that. We have tried as a council in the last three years to set up our own housing company again and dial back me up. We're just simply not big enough to do it. It's just not, we're, we're not a big enough company, we're not a big enough council. We don't have the finances to do it. We've tried to engage with our sister councils within Publica. And again, they haven't shown any interest that they, they don't wish to, to to participate in our own house building again. So what, what I am hoping tomorrow, what we're doing differently tomorrow, I, 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 Nigel's quite right. There's this there's this ream of, 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 of things that we need to go into that the government tell us that we need to do. Things like the SLA, and, you know, I've got my views on the SLA process and all that kind of stuff, and... and, and, and Tomorrow night, for the first time, there will be local builders in a forum where we can tell them exactly what you know, what your issues are, what our issues are, and why we can't go on doing it this way. Now, I'm hoping, and it is it is a hope, and it's something that I, we've got the chairman of that that tomorrow in Philip Burford here. I'm hoping above all that those local those local companies can come together and maybe accept not taking or it's not making 30 percent and instead if there's a development of 60 70 houses the type of thing that roger was referring to then in lydney instead of that being a barrett's or a gladman's doing it why can't our local builders get together form a conglomerate with us as the council leading the way and hopefully we can develop those houses that we need, that we know we need, and, and maybe they'll take a bit of a hit. We can take a bit of a hit. We can share the hit for the good of the community. That's what I'm hoping is going to come out of tomorrow night. And I genuinely think that there's an appetite for that. I've spoken to our local developers. I, I think they can see this. They don't, they don't want barracks coming in and building our houses. Why should they do it? Let's give people local jobs. Let's give people local houses. Houses, and I think this is the way I, I think we can do it by forming conglomerate partnership, whatever you want to call it. With us as the council has been the admin in that, and, and you know, looking at the land, even if it means, and you know, there's there's developers now that are sitting on pieces of land, not developing it because they're not going to quite make the money that they insist on making. So they've been selling it for five or six years. We as a council need to stop them doing that. We need to write to them and say, well, first thing, if you're not going to develop it, we'll take it off the allocations number. And secondly, we'll then look into compulsory purchase. Because if there's a piece of land that we can develop good quality community housing on, that our local developers will come with us to help us to assist it, I'm quite happy to go down that route. And that's what we'll try and do. I'm hoping above hope this is what comes out of the developers group. But you're absolutely right. We, we are trying and we will get those houses in the end somehow. Thanks, Doug. Thank you, Tim. And out of that, 
a geocroxal is there, there seems to be a consensus that small developments are preferred, but developers want large scale developments as the profit margin is higher. How can we resist that? I think you've answered that to an extent. If you bring uh, local uh, developers together and form um, a partnership, that might sort of help with that and also it might help with meeting the affordable housing percentages because I'm so mindful that we need not only houses to buy and affordable houses to buy, we need housing to rent to and that's vital, uh, particularly in this current economic climate. So uh, I do hope that that's a successful exercise, a start, an initiative tomorrow evening, Tim, that I'm sure many people here will get behind. Tom, you've had your hand up. Tom Forrester. Thank you, Di. Can you hear me? I've had a couple of technical issues already today. Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Um, as many of you know, I've been pushing the council to implement a low impact development policy for, oh, I must, I think it must be approaching 10 years now, something like that, uh, submitting it into the local plan and just generally trying to lobby. Uh, most of that being outside of the council and for the last three years within the council as well. Uh, the, the Welsh Assembly Government had a low impact development policy uh, on their books for some years now and it's proven to be a great success. Uh, myself and other members of the council have been in discussions with some of the people involved in creating the low impact policy out in Wales and what we know from their experience is that this policy is capable of making a significant contribution to our housing needs, of bolstering the local economy and also making our forests more self-sufficient in primary sector industries like food. Uh, the reality is, and the reality that we have to face, £160,000 for a starter home simply isn't affordable for many people in the forest. Af affordable is £12,000 per resident build cost. That's £200 a month, uh, £2,400 a year, over 10 years, £24,000. Now that is genuinely affordable. What we lack at the moment is a planning policy that will enable this to be legal. What we need to do is give local people the freedom to be able to meet their own housing needs. A low impact policy would permit this council, as well as private individuals, to build homes very affordably. It would also allow for more luxury and uh, higher market sort of eco homes to be developed to the highest environmental standards far in excess of national policy. Now, this has been tried for a decade out in Wales. And it's uh, this is the policy that has enabled many of the incredible buildings we've seen demonstrated on grand designs. And it would also lead directly to a revival of many of the small scale sustainable industries that the forest has been famed for throughout the ages. Small scale horticulture, agriculture, forestry, crafts, these kind of things. Now, there is no reason that the Forest and the Industry Council hasn't already implemented these policies other than a lack of understanding about what they actually are and a lack of political will. Now. The problem is the current planning policies that we have just simply don't permit these kind of sustainable dwellings to be built. And I'm just trying to figure out how we can go forward with this because it's a policy that's tried out in Wales. There's been hundreds of people calling for it locally and it's we're, we don't seem to be getting anywhere with it. I guess that's a Please. question to cabinet yeah. and the planners. Yeah. Tim, would um, you like to answer? I'd like, before you do, the Rewild project just made a very similar point, adding also, uh, which includes food production for all extra housing. Um, and they themselves, I believe, if I've read the emails properly on here, they're going to be building a log cabin roundhouse with sweet chestnuts from their social forestry team at New Leaf. The, the build will show people and get them involved in how to build your own home. So I, I just wanted to add that because it was pertinent to Tom's question. Yeah, th thank you, Diane. Uh, I've, uh, I've heard about that. And this is exactly the kind of thing we need to uh, do to upskill people in the forest with these sustainable building sort of uh, skills. Uh, but the problem is we don't currently have a planning policy that would enable people to live in these structures. We can build them and they could be nice follies in people's gardens, but we don't have a planning policy that would enable people to live in there. And that is what we need at the moment, like they've got out in Wales. Tim, would you like to add to that, please? Because I think it is a pertinent point and it is an add-on which could be included. Yeah, in the local uh, plan. Tom's just put that forward. 
Tom has put that forward as a as a proposal for the for the local plan. And obviously, it'll be discussed, and you know, in in the round, and 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 rightly so. It's just as valuable a, a view as anything else. I will say, I mean, I, I believe what Tom's referring to also demands that um, a certain amount of living off the land is, is is required, and that's what they do in Wales. They have to make so much of their um, living, eighty percent of their living off off their land, or something along those lines, which which complicates things further. As of course does the land allocation process. You know, until we start buying land that we can designate with, with where who, what goes where, it, it's somewhat difficult. But certainly things like the real rewild project, what Tom's talking about. Um, I noticed Andrew Dart was on here earlier, and Andrew's got something you know very impressive going over there, on, on over there. Even up to the more, and I'll say this: it's a, it's a, it's, it's a slightly more. Um, updated version of that or, or a different type of version of that anybody that's been to that um development at drybrook with the with the um ready made modular houses you know it, it may not be everyone's cup of tea it, it stopped everything it stopped the roads um getting blocked or got, got blocked the roads up i know that but that's a wonderful example i think of an estate that's come there it's modular housing. It can be it's relatively cheap to build and, and, and get here. And, and, and we're, you know, whatever we can do, whatever we can do is, is on, on the table. Nothing's off the table. We just have to be sure that, A, there's the people that want to do it. You know, Tom refers to hundreds of people wanting to do this, you know, and living off the land. That's great. If there is, that's great. If there's that call for it. I haven't seen that, is, you know, is all I'll say. But it's great if there is. And, you know, whatever we can do, whatever we can do. Though. Thank you, Tim. And um, I, I know there are a core of young people. I, I, I'm in touch with a few that would be really excited about this being an, sort of an additional part of the plan. The Rewild Project wants to come in and make a comment. And Tom, John Francis has made a, a, a good point too. He said, if we enable parishes with land trust to develop small scale, self build would be more achievable. I think that is a, a very pertinent point and something we need to look more at. But could, would the Rewild project like to comment, please? Um, just to pick up on a couple of points there, thanks for coming to us. Um, th there's, a, there's a lot of people that, that we work with um, that really do want to be more integrated into the environment and more autonomous with their food production. People are, are, are relying on food banks. When we've got food around us in the forest, we've got all the materials that we need to build our own homes. Um, and people people are crying out for this, and, and yet we, we're having to ship in food. 85% um, of our fruit is imported, you know. Um, we're relying on um, food banks and food that's brought in from Tesco's and other big supermarkets. And, here in Forry, we've got all the resources we need to be growing our own food and, and be really self-sufficient um, and not relying on big companies to build our homes. Um, yeah. So we, we... We've got a lot of it boils down to is uh, it's not just having affordable homes, but it's also buying affordable land or having land available for people to buy collectively as land trusts like tom suggests as well so you know even if there were a sort of a community land trust and like jackie suggested before there is a, there is a self-build policy but there's no real um there's no policy out there that allows people to live on the land and work the land and actually um you know have that as an integrated approach as a, as a sort of a whole holistic, holistic land plan design, really, but uh, there's nothing there to support that. Thank you for your observations, and I hope you're making formal representation to. Can the, I can uh, I join in the there. meeting? Sorry, I um, I got yeah. John Francis now. I'm 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 on the telephone. I can't. Um, I haven't been. Allowed to join the meeting. I wonder if I could put my hand up. Yes, yes, certainly. I will ask John Francis to speak. I'm sorry, can I have your name? Yes, it's Walt Williams. Walt, you can speak after John. Okay. I'll come to you next after John. Hello, can you hear me okay? 
Yes, thank you. Yes, thank uh, you. Th thank you, Di. Um, we've been discussing on the Cross Parish Group um, uh, ways to enable parishes um, to actually move forward. Our thoughts are that we need a um, some kind of parish toolkit where we have an ideal and the ideal covers um, what services are in a given parish or within a given area or zone as you would say and then basically each parish is weighted against the ideal and if we weight parishes against the ideal we know what the shortcomings are for, for sustainability be it in employment be it um, doctor surgery transport uh, active transport we can actually then you know, say weight it against that ideal and know what we need in each parish to make it more sustainable and obviously if, if that's tied into the discussions on housing then that way we'd actually know which way we were going so really that was my point okay and a very moot point which will be noted and hopefully you are making that I, I keep reiterating because this is a conversation and obviously Tim's listening for ideas to go forward, but absolutely it's essential that it goes through the formal process as well for consideration. Thank you, John. And okay. Thought, do you want to come in please? Uh, yes, um, I'm sorry I've joined the meeting so late, but I've had technical problems trying to use the link that was given to me um, but I'm on the telephone. Um, my computer is saying asking to join, but no one's allowed me to actually join uh, with a video. Anyway, I'll continue on the telephone at the moment. I've, uh, I live in Colford, and I've been involved with local plans since 2005. And I've met loads of different problems and issues through local plan stages. Um, and the, the largest bug in the system, as far as I can see, and has led to a lot of unwanted development in the area, is, be, is been the five-year land supply. Uh, that was used um, as an excuse um, for the Berry Hill, the lower lane situation. Um, and that wouldn't have come about had there been a, a sensible approach from the um, from the in inspector regarding um, the five-year land land supply, but every time um, we get a developer that wants to build, he'll use the five-year land supply as a means of getting his development through an appeal, um, and it, it doesn't matter how good a local plan is. If you haven't got a five-year land supply, then um, you're going to be shot down. Uh, that's that's um, your my and, experience. And yes, thank you, Walt. That is, and as we indicated at the beginning, or it was yeah. indicated at the, at the beginning, we've got 3.9-year land supply at the moment. So it is something that has to be addressed. However, Jackie has asked, um, has the Forrester Dean challenged the government on its housing numbers um, the CPRE report recommended that we do have we considered doing that um, and I, I would just add that Leo Williams has asked does anyone have any data regarding the environmental impact and installation qualities of the modular homes at Drybrook Leo I believe that information is held at the council and hopefully can be printed with notes from this meeting on the website. Um, I, I can remember going to a presentation. I don't know the answer off the top of my head unless the officer does, but I, that is something I think you may be interested in seeing. Um, but going to Walt's uh, observation and Jackie's question, Nigel or Tim, would you like to answer that about challenging the figure? Um, yeah, I didn't go in there, don't. Um, it, Nigel added out to me, but um, the advice that I've been given is that we don't, sh we shouldn't challenge it. Um, that we can certainly look at the um, status free forest and see if that's taken away. Um, 
uh, th these meetings should never get political. We shouldn't ever think about getting political. But central government is hell bent on housing, and it sees housing as the way out of everything. And you know, um, does anybody actually think that we would be successful if we did challenge them? I know there was a feeling in the discussion I had with my portfolio support group that we might well end up even worse off than we are now. And that was something we didn't want to risk. We thought we would um, better off uh, knowing the detail that we know now and, and aiming to clear that hurdle rather than risk making the hurdle any higher. Um, uh, there may well be challenges. You know, it, it's it's something we can take back to the portfolio support group if, if um, this forum would like me to. And that'll be a matter for council and my fellow councillors to make. Thank you, Tim. I think it is something that at least needs to be discussed at that group. Um, and from my own observations, absolutely, we need housing. We need a lot of housing in this area, but the right housing in the right place and affordable. And um, obviously, it's got to be environmentally and economically um, uh, viable too. So there's so many aspects. But Colin, would you like to make... Uh, a comment please before we go back to the other question yeah um it's um I, i'm here a part of any rate for, from cpre this evening um the i would say that we've done a lot of work within cpre looking at both nationally and at local level with respect to housing and constraints and particularly land constraints uh, and the attitude of, of, of government to that. And uh, we would be very happy from CPRE, if you do want to consider your position, that we would uh, you know, come along and, 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 and chat to you about that work and the, 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 the various papers which have been published by CPRE on, on the subject. Uh, thank you, Colin. I, I'm sure that... Well, I myself will take that to the group. I think that's an important point. So thank you for that off there. Uh, Philip Burford, you wanted to make a comment? Yeah, thanks, Di. Um, a few quick points, actually. Um, the... Um, Sorry, it's flashing funny things at me. Yeah, the, the first thing I want to say is about the five-year land supply. Um, there isn't really a way around this this five-year land supply apart from delivering a supply of land. I know it sounds stupid to be as, as obvious as that, but but if we want to be able to choose where we're going to put the houses ourselves and not let um, um, opportunist developments happen, we have to be able to five, provide a five-year land supply, and that's one of the things that I'm going to be I'm. I should say that I'm, I'm going to be chairing tomorrow night's forum of developers. Um, and that's one of the issues which I think we need to discuss there as well. Because make no mistake about it, the five-year land supply is about building the bulk of houses that we need, not the few that we'd like to. Um, if we don't get the bulk numbers built, we're going to be in the, in the five-year land supply problems which we're in again now. Um, what I think I'd like people to give a steer on, if they could, please, because this is something we want to pass on to the developers tomorrow night, is, is just to get a steer of how you would like the housing spread out. And with respect to the people that are talking about self-builds and eco-homes and those kind of things, those are never going to be 2,000 houses in one heap, um, whether they're spread out or in one place. So how, how do people feel about those numbers of houses? How should they be delivered? Where should they be delivered? Because I think that's, that's the important thing. Um, I've been around on the council for a while and the, we have challenged the numbers that we've had to provide housing for in the past. Um, we even got to something called the Liverpool method in the last plan, which allowed us to, develop, to, to deliver less housing. But when it came to it, that didn't work. And we had to go back and deliver to this standard calculation. Um, we might like to think we've got land constraints, but in reality, we haven't. Um, 
the um the, the reality of the situation is that in a in a a big rural district like ours, there is plenty of room. It's a question of choice as to where they're put. You go to Cheltenham Borough Council and ask them about their their land constraints, and they'll tell you, we don't have any land left. And that is a real problem for them. So, um, yeah. Can we have some views, please, on um, how how the bulk numbers of houses should be delivered? And where you'd like to see those, please, so I can, we can feed those into the developers tomorrow night. Uh, can I join in this conversation? Uh, well, before you do, um, I am mindful of time and I don't want to stop debate, but could people write some comments in because we're not going to be able to cover it all tonight. And there will be future meetings, but um, yes, was that Ward who spoke? Yes, it is. Yes. Yes. Walter, yes. if you'd like to make a comment, I am. If any comments that are written in the uh, chat box will be looked at, I can assure you of that. And we will look uh, to go um, to another meeting. Walt, before you speak, Nigel, did you want to say something? We'll have your questions then. And then, unfortunately, that will be the end of this first session. Yeah, um, but. Yes, Nigel. I'll just keep reading the message with these chat box messages that I'm looking at. Is that the what it says is they can only be seen by people in the call and they're deleted when the call ends. So if that's right, and I assume it is, please can anybody email the local plans address with anything that they want us to take out of this meeting that isn't on the record because the meeting's been recorded by. Uh, by one of our members actually but the, i'm sure we can make that available but anything yes, but that's you put the address in the, in the box now then nigel could you just put it yes in i can so people who aren't yes, aware can. of the email um, address would be able to note it so that it is so that it isn't lost and i'm sorry if i thought we could take a record after i, I thought you could please. as well but yeah, it, yeah it, it's, it's okay i'm copying and pasting the in call messages onto a uh, word sheet so it's okay uh, we still we, yeah. we have got those oh excellent thank you and Walt, uh, thank you, you. Something? Uh, yes um, unfortunately as i'm not in the meeting on the video i can't join your chat sessions but uh, yeah uh, regarding the uh, last comment regarding bulk housing i did propose at the last um, plan e examination that there should be a new town built uh, I'm v very much of the opinion that houses should be near em employment and um, it's a bugbear really that we don't have a, a growth p potential um, uh, outlined by the district council to show where employment uh, will definitely come because I think we are definitely short of employment um, and uh, my reasoning for an, a new town development um, closer to the eastern boundary is that then people can travel to places like Cheltenham and Gloucester and Bristol uh, uh, where the, there is work and that would then take pressure off the rest of the district uh, building on, on green sites for people to um, your commute out of the, the district to find work. Um, so I think that is um, one of the things that I think should be um, looked at very seriously is where we can put a new town on the eastern edge of the, uh, the boundary. Thank you. Thank for that, you. Ward. Nigel, um, I am mindful that the time is going on. I would like you to end, end this particular session. Um, with the completion of the questions because it would be unfair of the people that did uh, did pose them but i can assure members that are present another uh, community forum will be had and i know there was a comment that are we going on months after months after months no we haven't got the time for that but we will look please email in and let tim know particularly if there are areas that we need to discuss and would like to discuss i think it's something we need to come back to point 
every point that people are thinking needs to be part of the consideration and the conversation towards our plan. But we have to do it reasonably quickly. So I think we will need to have a meeting within the next three, four weeks um, to enable that to happen because time is moving on. And what is the time process, Nigel, just to inform people? Well, the, the timing for the local plan is all written um, so that we would originally have been expecting to be submitting a draft plan or to be preparing a draft plan at the latest early next year. That's unlikely to happen now, so it's more likely to be summer or autumn. And that will put us in the situation where it's either extremely tight or too tight to meet the original, the five year sort of replace your plan within five years dictat from government. And there are a variety of reasons for that, but it is unlikely that we will have a draft plan until possibly this time next year or a little bit earlier. But that will be a complete plan with a strategy behind it, which is what we're having, what is in effect some of the formative discussions for the revision of that strategy right now. Thank you for that, Nigel. Would you like to complete the questions and then I'll take any final comments before the meeting's closed? Yeah, thank you, Di. Um, I was on the point of reading the third question from John Francis and this parish group. Where are the results from the consultation on the preferred strategy? Over 7,000 respondents to a petition all reports from parishes, legal representatives and CPRE, Environmental Law Foundation, how will they be aired and given consideration as we move through the local plan process? The response, the material received as part of the consultation has been published. That's the material that was sent to the council. But the FODDC response has not. This is something that will be discussed as part of the current exercise in which members will need to consider, especially because many of the responses depend on the overall strategy that the local plan follows. It is hoped that the forums will help in reviewing the overall strategy and lead towards a position where full responses to the representations can be published. And finally, a set of questions from Robert Hitchens Limited, um, which the first one, could we have an update regarding ongoing discussions with the JCS authorities under the duty to cooperate? That's the joint core strategy being prepared for Gloucester, Tewkesbury and Cheltenham. And the response, discussions continue with neighbouring authorities as the local plan evolves. And it is understood that the current timetable for the joint core strategy in the form of an update is being prepared. In other words, they're preparing their timetable. The individual Gloucester authorities meet on a regular basis and exchange information about their respective plan programs. Second question from the same source, the local plan review spatial strategy is central to the council's efforts to address climate change. With that in mind, would perpetuating a dispersed pattern of development within the district, which would result in higher levels of harmful carbon emissions, represent a missed opportunity for the council to make a difference? And the response, although the matter will need to be further examined and supported by additional evidence, there are potential advantages from the concentration of development, whether at existing settlements or elsewhere. While sustainable building construction can be applied in a variety of locations, transport is the largest source of carbon emissions. And consequently, the location of development is critical to achieving the necessary targets. A plan should seek to reduce the need to travel, enable active travel where possible and accommodate public transport. Development should be located where there are existing facilities or where these can be provided in a sustainable manner. Next question from Robert Hitchens. Public engagement is key to plan making. However, can we be assured that the weight attached to representations by the council when taking the plan forward will be based on planning merit. The response, the council are mindful of the need to make planning decisions on the basis of planning merit and do so on the basis of relevant evidence. Included in the evidence that will be considered will be any representations received which relate to the planning issues involved. 
And following from question three and question four from the same source, have councillors been briefed that only 142 of the 6,155 people who signed the petition received by the council in January 2021, objecting to the preferred option of locating development in the vicinity of where the A40 and 48 meet, specified a Huntley, Church and Wilhelm origin. This represents just 2.3% of those signing and clearly presents a totally different picture of the declaration of public sentiment that had intended than that intended by the promoters of the petition. Nearly 75% of the signatures did not specify GL postcode, uh, up to an alarming 35% originated from outside the UK. And the response the document referred to was provided in support of representations to the preferred option consultation, which commenced in 2020. It will be taken into account as part of the evidence on which the local plan will be based. It should be considered alongside all representations received, many of which refer, referred to important planning considerations which must be taken into account. These include landscape, transport, vulnerability to flooding, impact on agriculture, etc. Members of the council are aware of the petition and the large number of signatories. And that's the questions. We have received another communication pointing out a number of issues, which I think we... We have covered many of them. I have we read have that. covered, yeah. Yes, and, and I do think, actually, Nigel, that can be put on with the questions on the website, but it doesn't need to be read out this evening. I am aware that a Paul Thomas, I don't know if he has left, did indicate... No, I'm still, I'm still here, Di. Um, it was really in response to um, Philip Burford's question, where he was as actually asking, what is it you want? Um, so, so it's very difficult to ask, you know, ask a question um, amongst the, you know, with a forum like this. So what I want to do is just point to uh, really the um, Cross Parish Forum, because that that is that was the you know the widest forum that we could we could possibly get in this, and what that um, what that forum actually recommended was you know is described as a set of principles, and those principles really was asking for incremental development you know across the uh, across the Forest of Dean, for a number of, you know for a number of reasons really, and this has been debated. But, um, you know, it, it was just the fact what we were looking for is more local jobs where, you know, uh, one of the last respondents was talking about employment. What we're desperate to do is bring employment deep into the Forest of Dean because having the whole area as a commuter area just makes no sense at all. And all it does is clogs our roads up. So, um, you know, we desperately need to bring wealth back in and so, you know, this had been debated and it was looking for incremental development in proportion to um, existing settlements, you know, the size of existing settlements, and then bringing, you know, and then building employment provisions within the forest. So, so that was universally agreed. And those, those principles were, were, were written up and, and have, have been, uh, you know, publicised. So um, in answer to Philip's question, that was the best that we can come up with at the moment. But that, that certainly, um, you know, certainly had, had the weight uh, of the cross parish group, you know, amongst it, which represent uh, a sizable number of parishes. OK, thank you, Di. Well, thank you very much for that, Paul. Um, just before I leave, I just want to check there are no other hands up. And I, I do want to thank you all very much for giving your time to this forum. As I said, it's informal, it's a conversation, but your views, I think to make that very clear, your views will be listened to um, and discussed as appropriate at the next planning policy forum. But I must again reiterate, formal consultation is taking place too. Please put those formal, uh, your formal views to the planning process, to the local plan process. It's vital that you do. I don't know if Jill has anything else you would like to add, but I would like to thank you very much. Um, and we will hold another one soon. 
and um, we will look at the observations already put forward if you have any ideas that you think would be important to discuss not just to have emails sent in then we will hold another one very soon thank you very much can i ask who to send any emails to regarding um, your comments on this evening's meeting you, you can send it to tim tim Gwillem, because he, okay. he would or i believe you put an email at nigel would you like to um say it as well because i haven't got it yes I, send it, the easiest thing is to send it either to our address which is localplans at fdean.gov.uk or simply email myself because i think you've probably got my email address or yes i think i have yeah <laughs> okay thanks thank you and thank you very much and hopefully next time we'll, you'll be able to join you don't we don't need to be looking at each other but you need to feel part of the process and be able to add to chat so thank you all very much. And I hope you've gained something out of this. It's a start. We're all green and new to this idea of community forums, but the community's voice is imperative. This local plan is going to work collectively for the Forest to be. So thank you all very much. Is there any idea when the next meeting might be? Well, I hadn't realized the process is going to be longer than i thought i was trying to rush the next meeting but i'm hoping it will be held because there is a planning inquiry happening the first couple of weeks of november so i believe if we have got the time it will probably be towards the end of november are people happy with that i think that's likely to be about right given the, the other things we do yes have. because we it have got a, a, the uh, northern quarter inquiry happening so it's, it's just I'm, I'm mindful of officers time as well we, um, so if we say towards the end of november um, and are people happy for it to be on a wednesday at this time yes okay yep. and then if People have got other commitments they can go on to them. And I must say, um, Jill, did you want to make a final comment before we close the meeting? Yes, um, thanks, Di. I, thank you for sharing the meeting. And also, I'd just like to thank everybody who's contributed. I think it's been a wonderful opportunity to hear a, a range of different voices. I'm sorry if, if uh, some of the jargon uh, was not understandable. And I hope nobody leaves the meeting not understanding anything. And if they do, please ask. Thanks a yes, lot. And Jackie, did you want to make a quick observation before we close? Yes, thank you, Di. I'm so, I just want to get in. This one for um, Councillor Burford. Uh, when you asked, you know, what do people want so you can take something to the developers? I just wanted to point out that um, some parish councils, including Mitchardine Parish Council, um, preferred the um, new, new settlement option. And for them, it would have been um, looking towards the M50 way. Yes, Jack. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. And Leo, finally, because I were closed in the yes. meeting, but if you would like to. Yes, I think it's an important point. I'm 59 years old, and I think I'm one of the. Um, I think I'm one of the younger people on the meeting. We need desperately to engage more younger people. Because at the end of the time, it's their future. We we we're on the uh, we're we're on the dying side of fifty eight in my case, and uh, we've we've really got to engage some younger people and get um, them on these forums. Absolutely, Leo. I I think you're right. Um, we have just appointed a youth champion, and I'll put it to the youth champion that one of their first targets to try and engage their future. It's their future, and the young people I talk to want their homes locally, but at this moment, there is a huge barrier to that happening. So thank you for that, Leo, and I will end on that note.